Okay, so let's uh, take a look at VexCode Pro, and today we are going to take a look at using the adjusting speed example. So make sure that if your screen shows a VexCode V5 and VexCode Pro, we want to use the VexCode Pro. So I'm going to double click. Don't be concerned if it takes a while because it does. It, this uh, program takes a while to load up, typically. No getting around that, as far as I can tell. So, okay, great. It uh, um, brings up the opening window. We're going to go to File, and then Open Examples. And there are lots and lots of examples and the more, the better you get at this, uh, the more you can learn from these. Uh, but I, I'm going to recommend starting with something that's pretty simple, and that's this adjusting speed. Uh, this is under drivetrain, and there, this program has a lot of um, uh, a lot of pre-formatted uh, programming into it uh, that will allow you. Um, if you were to use this program and modify it, um, I think it would give you some pretty good control over how far the robot goes. So let's take a look at it. Adjusting speed, then next. And uh, I'm going to call this adjusting speed test 2. And uh, one thing about naming these things is if, you, um, if you're worried about messing up the original program just you always want to save it as a new name so that the uh, previous program isn't deleted you know, so I have a speed test one um, and I don't want to change that so I'm going to make this one speed test two okay so let's take a look at this program um, this is main uh, this window and what we're looking at here and that corresponds to main here, main.cpp, main.cpp. Um, each of these uh, other choices will open up some other programming that all kind of integrates into one whole. So let's, let's start with the main. Remember uh, that everything green is a comment, which means it doesn't actually do anything in the program. It just tells us about the program. Uh, the main thing that we see here is then it says drivetrain, and then notice 110D is under ports. Uh, so that's going to become important uh, later on. We'll talk about it. So it says include vex.h. We don't know what vex.h is yet, but it's right there, and we can open it up and look at it if we click on that. Um, using namespace vex, we're not going to worry too much about this. Int main is going to be in every program. Remember that these uh, curly brackets are important. Uh, a lot of code needs to be encapsulated in between an open bracket like this and then a closed back bracket like that. Uh, let's see. Yep. If I click on it, notice this is highlighted and it tells me which uh, curly bracket um, corresponds to that uh, bracket. So fine. Um, then vex code init is going to be in a lot of programs. It's telling us here it's telling the robot that here comes the program and initializes it um, so now it, this program actually has three different ways to make the motor move drive train drive four then forward six inches this is kind of obvious uh, this this method drive four will tell the robot to or a motor to move forward in a um, uh, in a particular distance or unit. So, fine. Forward six inches. And it says in the comment, move forward at the six inches at um, default 50% velocity. So, forward has some default velocity. Right now it's 50%. I'm sure you can change that. And then, wait one second is going to wait a second before moving on to the next thing. Then, what about this next set of code? Uh, and, and by the way, in this particular program, this happens linearly. The, pro ro the program's going to read this first, then it's going to read and execute this, which was go forward six inches, then it's going to do this, then it's going to do this, 
then it's going to do that in this particular program. That's the way this works. So what about this one? This is just another way to do the same thing. For drivetrain, set the velocity 90%. So 90% velocity, but when you use it this way, you also have to say how far. So this says, this again, the comma tells you, 6 inches at 90% velocity. Once again, wait a second, and then do whatever comes next. Here's a way to turn using this uh, set of um, commands. Uh, drivetrain, turn 4. And turn right, 90 degrees, and again, it tells you what that is. Drive train, turn, uh, set turn velocity. Here's a, another way to, um, to turn. So doing the same thing, this and that, just a different way of writing it, um, and probably depends on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, so fine, that was just main. What, let's just look at these uh, other options. Robot config, what was that? And notice if I click on this, it pops up here. Um, most of this is not, uh, it's, we don't really need to mess around or know too much. It's gonna, it means it's bringing in all the brain functions. It's uh, bringing in whatever smart drive is, which is all those commands, and it's so that it knows just exactly what to do when you said uh, set velocity, for example, and all the rest of the code programming. So, that's, uh, you know, that's what's in robot config. Notice, normally, robot config, you don't get to edit it. Um, and you don't want to. Uh, vex.h include all this stuff. This is just so that all the commands that you can access in Vex code are going to be available to you. Include this, include that, include this. That's why they're included. And then keep on using them. Basically, this is a do while loop and then a for loop. And it's, if, you know, it's basically telling you keep on doing it as long as the program is going. Fine. So these two things didn't make much of a difference. But this one uh, kind of does. Um, we don't have to mess with it when you run this the first time. But it has set up the motor left drive smart and the motor right drive smart. And it's made those things uh, or allowed them to take over two different motors whatever motors attached to port 1 and whatever motors attached to port 10. Uh, you might not be using this right away, but it also, uh, this program includes uh, this gyro uh, sensor, which we are definitely going to want to use this year. And then there's some more you know, code down here that we can get into later on, but it's uh, referring back to that gyroscope. Um, this is uh, just stuff you're going to see. Um, in on this on the screen um, and so brain screen whenever it's printing that's actually something that will be displayed on the um, on on the on the brain screen so fine uh, but let's just go back up to here port 1 and port 10 this is something that and also the gyro which we're not using but it's a, a, on three wire port D so that I just want to talk about this briefly before ending the tutorial uh, if you go to this button right here, this allows you to change um, how you are configuring your motors and sensors. Um, you can do it by typing in down here, and then this would change up here. But usually, people find it easier to use this uh, interface. So I'm going to click on, right now, what this is telling us with that number one is on your physical brain, you need to plug your, in, your motor into port one. I'm going to click here on that one. And notice this is set up for a four wheel, uh, four inch wheel. If you have a bigger wheel, you can change it to five or change it to six and the program will adjust accordingly. Uh, right now, uh, most of your gear cartridges are the green ones that are 18 to 1, but if you have a red one and you click here, the program will adjust. Six, a blue one, the sixth one, the program will adjust. So um, now let's click up on the one here. Uh, if I click number two and I say done, notice back here, it became port two. Let's try that again. Click on two. Click on it again. Click on four. Say done. Oh, it changed to four. Now, 
that means that the um, this interface allows you to change what port you're going to want but that also means back on your physical robot you've got to change the plug if you said port 4 here but the plug on your physical robot is 1 nothing will happen so let's put it back on 1 and done and so yeah so this but this must correspond to what you do on your physical robot and again even though we're not using this let's check this out the gyro it's on three wire port d that's this right here up on the in the configuration uh area so i'm going to click on it and i'm going to click on the d again and there are three options no gyro three wire gyro or inertial gyro or inertial sensor which i believe does the same thing uh, if i click on the three wire gyro then it's going to give me these lettered ports. If you haven't seen them, they're on the sides. They're like flat um, areas. You, you plug in these wires. If, if you have a sensor like it, you'll see how it needs to be plugged in. So there are eight of them. And you, if again, if I say B and I click Done, notice three-wire port had been D and now it's B. Click, click, three-wire gyro, A, B, C, D. Let's make it F, Done. And we'll turn to F over here. Um, but by the way, let's do this again. There's an inertial sensor that does essentially the same thing. But if you use that, then it must be connected into a numbered port, which are the normal sort of phone cord ports. Let me just see what happens here if I click 4 and done. Ah, see, it changed over here to the inertial sensor and port 4. So it's pretty cool pretty easy to change things up here and you don't have to you know you don't have to remember or know what the um, the names of some of these commands were uh, so I'm gonna end it there um, and um, encourage you to play around with this and uh, run the program a few times uh, maybe try to get it to um, drive in a cert or a square or something like that and come back to exactly where it started